Hello YouTube fam, it's your Uncle Tim. How you doing, Timsters? How you feeling? We're going to have a conversation today. We don't have an Uncle Tim rant of the day. Fam, you know what? This economy has disposed of disposable income. For a lot of us, there's no more disposable income. We just have income. We're trying to find a way to make ends meet. We're trying to make a way to still um, buy a few of the things or trinkets that we used to love before all of this jumped off, you know, right now, you know, a lot of us are saying, hey, you know, Hasbro and all of them, listen, no, they realize that the economy and everything else is going down and they're trying to find a way to get their self back up, just like everybody else. You know what? A lot of these toy companies have taken us for granted. And the thing is, during this particular situation, a lot of us have just backed away from collecting. And that's what's going on. There's a lot of people that just sit the hell with it. Because at the end of the day, fam, you can only do so much. You can only pay for so much. You can only care for so much before you just get tired of your damn self. And this is what's happening. A lot of people are frustrated and angry and mad and going through some shit. This is why you see so much crime. This is why you see so much of violence. This is why you see so much of people just saying, you know, the hell with every damn thing. Because they're just tired. You know what? You don't come out of a pandemic, then have another damn pandemic. It's, it's crazy. And this is what a lot of people are not seeing. You know, um, I understand, you know, as collectors, we buy stuff. You know, I buy stuff every now and then. And you see me and I show it to you and I make sure you see it. You know, but the thing that I'm looking at is it's bigger than all of that. It's a lot of shit going on that we're not paying attention to. You know, the war over water is about to be something different. The war over food, because there is so much going on there. Now that the food prices are at an all-time high, food is rivaling gas. You got a lot of people just looking at it this way, you know, trying to find jobs that they can work from home to try to save. Now jobs are trying to find a way to tax your ass from working from home. You know, if it's not the job, it's the state trying to find ways to tax you at home. Ain't that funny? It's crazy how this situation is playing itself out. But you know what? You got to take it each day at a time. Take a deep breath. Man, I've just been taking deep breaths. You know, like I said, I've been feeling the anxiety. I've been feeling those um, gut feelings. You know, it's a lot of shit going on. And, you know, I'm not trying to tell you to stress or anything like that. You know, I'm not telling you to stop collecting. I'm telling you to have fun. But I'm telling you, you know, think about everything going on. Just keep thinking about it. You know, um, I still have people on here who have still spent the way they were spending before, which is still good. It lets me know that the economy in certain places is still good. You know, here in Chicago, the food went up. You know, just like everywhere else. And I know you know that. But Chicago have a lot of extra taxes that a lot of people don't see. There is so much going on here that, you know, I'm like, damn, you got taxes on everything. Plastic bags, water tax. It used to be a sugar drink tax. They had to stop that because people were like just going other places. And they're like, this is too damn much. You know, like you taxing us for every damn thing. Sooner or later, if we're not careful, they're going to tax us on air. And see, this is what we need to pay attention to. You know, draw a line in the sand, just like we did with Hasbro. You know, a lot of people said to me the other day, they said, Unc, you over there raving and jumping up and down because they listen about the uh, window boxes, man. You know what? The war is not over. The war is not over. But you know what? You got to savor each victory, fam. You just don't go in and just keep going. You savor those victories as you get them because you don't know when the next victory may come. So you savor each one as they come. You know, it's just like if you have a financial advisor, they tell you to pay off your, if you got five damn credit cards, they tell you to pay the smallest one off first. And people asked me before when I mentioned that, they said, why? You know, you should pay the one with the highest APR. And I say no on that one, too. You should pay the smallest one off because you get instant gratification. It shows you that you've done something. It shows you that this could be done. Because if you're having a hard time paying off the big ones and it's going to take you a long time, sooner or later, you may get fed up and stop. 
So you take your small victories as you get them, fam. You know, right now, you know, we winning. You know, we got people listening. McFarlane is opening a collector's limited, you know, uh, edition, you know, where it's, it's a universe of figures, you know, that the collector could actually um, have created. Now, you know what? That sounds really good, but it sounds pricey. It sounds like he want to say for the collector, by the collector, but the collectors with deep pockets. You know, a one-off figure is not going to be cheap. And some of these figures might go up in value over a period of time because if we all doing this and they're different figures that we all won't create it, you know, sky's the limit. I just want you all to pay attention to everything that's happening. Funko is not a one-off. Uh, what's happening with Hasbro is not a one-off. Mattel, one-off. No, everything is happening with everybody. These store shelves that you see that are empty, it represents that people are not buying. And the stores are not filling stuff that they don't see people buying. So they're trying to restack or uh, rearrange these planograms to bring in new merchandise where people will buy. You know, at the end of the day, you know, people just don't want to spend their money on anything anymore. You know, money is hard to come by now. And you're just looking at it, you know, and you're just trying to make everything work for you. You know, again, I know you like, oh, you be talking kind of doom and gloom. You know, this is a toy channel. I expect to see reviews on toys and you smiling and running around doing toy stuff. Fam, come on. We all grown here. We grown as men and women. You know what? That's the thing that I want people to understand. You know, when you go to a channel and people are being real. That represents a lot. It represents the honesty of the channel, you know, that they're being real with you, that, you know, they're not sitting here lying, talking about stuff that don't make sense, stuff they ain't doing. You know what? I practice what I preach. You know, I cherry pick now. You know, I go to places where I can get the stuff cheaper. It may not be the stuff that is number one on my list, but you know what? It's stuff that's on my list. You know, if I told you I wanted to get off into uh, wrestling figures, the first thing to do is find a place where I can find them for cheaper. At. You don't always get the A-plus figures first. You know, you start off getting the Hawks and, you know, the Ultimate Warriors, the John Cena's and, you know, the Undertaker's. No, you take your time. Take your time and get the figures you can starting off. And you just keep going from there. You know what? Those $20 hits that we are taking, it's just like I said before, it's like a drug, the euphoric hit. You take it, you inhale, and it's like a fix for a minute. Then we buy the next one, and we doing the same thing. It's the same thing with every hobby, because these are little, you know, when you see people buying purses, them uh, Louis Vuitton purses, and they showing them to you, the Birkin bags, you know, you ever see what they got on these YouTube channels. I take a look every now and then and see what everybody doing. That's the only way that you will find out what hobby is different. Like I told you, none of these hobbies are different. Everybody's fighting with everybody because everybody wants the spotlight. Everybody want to be number one. You know, I was looking at some of the channels, fam, and I just couldn't believe it. I was just happy with what everybody's doing. There's lanes enough for everybody here. But you know what? Everybody want to be the Nicki Minaj of, you know, the toy community. And, you know, whereas when I say the Nicki Minaj, you know, she's just the only one. And that's never good. If you only got one, that's not good. You need multiple. And now that Nicki Minaj is out the way, everybody's bringing music. All these female artists are flourishing. They doing good. And that's the way it should have been. It should have never been stagnant. You know, your rap is good, but you know what? You got to give it a break. I'm just confused sometimes. And fam, you know what? I will draw criticism for a lot of stuff. People tell me, hey, Eminem is the greatest rapper of all time. Eminem was the greatest rapper of that time. That time is over. No one listening to double entendres and mixed metaphors anymore. 
That ain't rap no more. Nobody listening to that type of music anymore. That's why it will be hard for him to come back unless he got other people with him. That's the same reason why nobody want to listen to Jay-Z or Lil Wayne. That type of rap is over. You know, this is just how I look at it. It doesn't mean that these people are not talented, that they weren't great musicians, great artists, or just great in general. But that style of rap is done. Listen to Glorilla and listen to Nicki Minaj. Two different styles. You know, people relate to Nicki Minaj. I know you're like, Unc, you're going real hard on this. Nicki Minaj is like 40-something. Glorilla is in her 20s. Who you think they're going to rock with more and relate with more? The 20-year-old. Real talk, fam. I'm just saying, you know, things are never what they look like. If you really break them down, they're never what they really look like. Mattel is having problems because their product is not on shelves. You're looking at it, they're clearancing out a lot of King Grey Skulls, a lot of those Triclops. Um, a lot of stuff is being clearanced out. Uh, Robot He-Man and, you know, all that damn stuff. Nobody's buying all those $30 He-Mans. You know what? <laughs> it was too damn much. But what they're buying is the stuff that you never have on the shelf. Fam, it's with all of these toy companies. Super 7 is one of the biggest problematic toy producers I ever see. You know, the stuff either be there sometimes or it don't. And people are like, well, it's in stock now, but it's overpriced now. You know, Super 7 is not poor quality, but you know what? It's just something that I can't see getting myself into deeper. When you start looking at those price tags and you start looking at what you get, you get extra heads, hands, accessories, yeah. But if the figure don't live up to all that, it's just like, what is all this? But fam, to later, thank you for watching. Peace out.